What's up everybody, Coach John here, back again with another video aimed at helping you lose a massive amount of weight just like I did. In our previous videos, we've talked about how to establish your maintenance calories, how to decide the right deficit for you, whether it's an amount of food you're taking out or a calorie number, and we talked about how to make adjustments to keep your progress moving along the way. Today I'd like to talk about which foods do we remove from our diet? Because this is, in some ways it's the same topic, in some ways it's very different. You could say, okay, I'd like to delete 300 calories from my daily intake, but where am I gonna take those calories from? Which foods do I cut out? And this often invites a lot of judgment-based thinking about foods that we've sort of absorbed from the ether or from things we've read or from friends, ideas that certain foods make it so that you can't lose weight and certain foods are gonna make you fat and certain foods are gonna, let's just call it sinful foods, right? Foods that if you eat this, you're not gonna get your desired result. Now, for the most part, this is just entirely untrue. This has been proven time and time again in controlled studies that equated for calories, no specific diet, no specific food group, is going to prevent anyone from losing weight or give someone a huge advantage in losing weight. That being said, some people respond better to different things. You might respond better to a high carb diet or a low carb diet, various levels of fat intake. That's something that you can figure out along the way. But starting off, you don't have to worry too much about macros and all that. We really just wanna focus on the quantity of food that we're eating. And while you can get digital and think of it just in terms of numbers, today I wanna to give you a different way of thinking about reducing your food intake so that your body can let go of weight effortlessly. And it may sound like I'm making things more difficult. Wait, you just said there's no bad food, so how do I know what to cut out? Well, remember when we took our food journal, I told you that, that if you could do it with no judgment and just, just seeing everything, right? increasing your awareness of your eating, that this would have benefits later on down the road. So now we go back to that food journal and specifically your awareness of what you're eating, which has hopefully continued as you've started your diet. Now you're gonna draw on that awareness to start to make decisions about what's right for you right now, specifically what's easy. So a lot of people think, well, you know, I've got these bad habits. I have cinnamon rolls for breakfast or donuts and I should probably have oatmeal or something, right? Not necessarily. Let's take Glenn. Glenn wakes up and he eats two cinnamon rolls for breakfast and he has this in his food journal. Some days it's cinnamon rolls, some days it's two donuts. He looks back over the food journal and he realizes the cinnamon rolls total up to a thousand calories in my breakfast and two donuts is 800 calories. And if I'm being honest, I like the donuts just as much or more than the cinnamon rolls. So if Glenn just switches over to donuts every day, he has deleted 200 calories out of his diet. This is why not taking the sort of sinful approach to any food or any food group allows you to make elegant, graceful transitions, right? How hard is it to go from eating cinnamon rolls to eating donuts? For your body, that might be enough of a stimulus to get the ball rolling. And certainly if you make two or three changes like this, maybe later on in the day you realize that something at lunchtime <clears throat> is higher calories and there's actually a lower calorie lunch that you prefer. Boom, we haven't even restricted anything from you. We've actually gotten you to eat more of the things that you like and you find delicious and you, you might've been able to delete up to five, 600 calories out of your day. The extent to which you can raise your awareness of how you feel and what food tastes like, how you feel when you're eating it, I mean. This is gonna help you realize where the opportunities are to take ground. In the last video yesterday, I talked about not having to force things or cut things out. Rather, things will sort of recede and you can just sort of take ground, you know, like a boxer in the ring. Um, sometimes the opponent steps back and you just step forward. You take that space, you cut the ring off. And in that way, I play this game with my kids where I don't, I put my hands behind my back and all I do is just angle my body. And every time they step back away from me to try to get around me, I dart in front of them, right? And before they know it, they're backed into a corner. That's what you can do with dieting. No one can give you a mathematical formula or a, a diet plan that's gonna tell you exactly how to do this. This is very individual. It has to do with our own connection to food and eating and actually, Diets often force people to remove themselves from connection to food. And my approach is, that, is saying, actually, we wanna admit that that connection is there no matter what, 
And it's lack of connection from our emotions around eating that is wreaking havoc in our lives. Being connected to your feelings around food include things like, I'm full now, I don't need to keep eating. Yeah, that sounds nice, but I think I'm just bored, right? You, you deepen your ability to make good decisions. I think it really works like you raise your awareness and then you raise your ability to act on that awareness. And those can be two separate things, but it does start with awareness. So for the most part, when it comes to which foods do I cut out of my diet, think less about cutting out and more about making trades, right? Trade for something that's more delicious than the thing you're eating. Trade for something that maybe it just requires an ingredient that you're not used to buying from the store and you've been wanting to try spinach in your eggs rather than cheese or feta rather than cheddar because it's fewer calories, right? There are all sorts of lower calorie substitutions you can make that are more delicious. Trust me, a lot of times you're eating processed foods, you start eating real food and it's addictive, man, stuff's good. You ever had feta? Stuff's like 35 calories an ounce and it's delicious. You know, the one time you can just cut stuff out completely is when you use your awareness to realize, I don't like eating this thing that I eat all the time. Like I just, I just gravitate toward it. I don't know why, it's just sugar and fat and it, it you know, flicks a switch in my brain. Feel free to let those things go. If they're not serving you, let them go. But apart from that, look for trades. And if you can't trade up for something that's more enjoyable, trade for something that's just as enjoyable or 80% as enjoyable. You know, maybe you like a potato chip, right? And maybe you're able to recognize that you like eating them, but you don't like the way you feel after. Maybe finding something with a crunch like popcorn allows you to have a snack, have your crunchy treat, and it doesn't make you feel bad afterward, right? It's not as good as your potato chip, but it's 80% as good. And again, you don't have to start off replacing your entire diet with stuff that's 80% as good, but as you take your ca calories from maintenance and try to work them lower and lower to keep progress going, these are decisions you can make. And there really are no sinful foods. Like I said, if you're trying to ensure progress, you can try different things like lower glycemic index foods. You can try shifting your macros. We'll talk about that later. But a lot of people think that they have to get their macros dialed in order to lose weight. And that's just not true. You just need to lower your calories. Although I do recommend people pay more attention to protein right off the bat. Again, topic for another video. And one other time that you might consider cutting a food out entirely is a food that you might say is offensive to your diet. That's the term. <laughs> Something that if you start eating it, you just, you have no control with it. And everybody has that. And you know, you, if you go through this process long enough, you'll lose a lot of those triggers. You'll lose a lot of that impulse to binge on things. But sometimes there's just that one thing that it'll just get you. You know, if you take a bite, you can't have just one. And these foods can alternate throughout time. I'm going through a bit of a sweet phase. I didn't have a sweet tooth at all for like six years. For a long time, I could have ice cream and cookies in the house, whatever, people can eat that. I just don't, eh, I'm good, I don't eat that. And now it's like, no, can't have it around. <laughs> so feel free to get any binge triggers or things that if they're not gonna incite a binge, they'll just knock you off course. But again, these are things that you can discover about yourself along the way. These are steps you can take deeper into a diet to ensure progress. Certainly not things you all have to do at once. And a couple other notes, people have a lot of ideas about this food's gonna kill you and this food's gonna kill you and this food is gonna melt your bones and this food is gonna make your eyes boil in your face and run down your face, right? So for instance, diet soda. If you are used to drinking soda and soda is part of your day and you can switch to a diet soda that tastes as good or 80% as good and it fills that, that role in your diet, make that substitution. I don't think diet soda is harmful to humans, especially in smaller doses. But even if we're operating on the precautionary principle and kind of just saying, eh, it seems a little, you know, artificial and I don't want to drink that, it's going to be better for your health than full sugar soda. And if it helps you lose 200 pounds, guess what? You use this thing effectively. Obesity is going to be the number one threat to your health. I think that's never been more clear. And I know some people don't like the word obesity, but it's just a scientific term, meaning someone who has a significant amount of fat on their frame. In future videos, I'll talk about substitutions that I like to do. I can give you a video just with ideas on substitutions from one thing to another. If you'd like to find substitutions for your favorite foods, put them in the comments below. 
If I know of a substitution, I'll tell you, and I'll also use these suggestions for the next video. And that goes for all comments or questions. If you need help, let me know. If you're looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can email me at johnoakescoaching at gmail.com. That's Oaks with an E, O-A-K-E-S. If you're looking for no-cost support, you can go over to the Facebook group, Lose Weight with John, and definitely subscribe to this channel. I'm hoping to be here quite often and using YouTube as my main outlet for helping people out. Okay, that's all for today. I hope this was helpful. Like, subscribe, comment. That really helps the algorithm and it helps other people find this stuff. People, man, it's astonishing. There's so many people who just have no idea where to start. So please subscribe, tell your friends, tell your friends to join the group. Take the links to these videos and share them on social media. Get the word out. You know, just if even if one or two people shared it to their Facebook page or their or whatever social media they're on, it would really help people who are hurting find some hope. So with that said, I will see you next time. Take care.